If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name is Obi, and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we'll be talking about how Neo needs to address their sales problem uh, sooner rather than later. This is going to be a good episode, but if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click the like button, notification bell icon, and leave a comment down below as your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel. So Neo burned almost $2 billion just last year, and they're expected to burn even more cash this year with Q1. They reported a net loss of $690 million, of around $690 million. So even with investor funding and more money coming into the stock, Neo still has a very serious problem given the burn rate currently. To tackle this situation, it's likely that Neo is going to have to raise even more capital and secure funding for the next three years. However, it's important that Neo doesn't just focus on cash flow and securing funding, they also have to fix the problem at its root, which is increasing their sales. If Neo continues to have the current number of sales that they're having, even significant funding won't be enough to keep the company afloat. At a certain point, William Lee, CEO and co-founder of Neo, even said that if Neo continues to sell what it's selling, um, him and Quinn Lee Hong, co-founder and, and president, will have to find new jobs. This statement underscores the urgency of addressing Neo's sales challenges. Now, Neo has taken some steps to address their sales challenges. At first, they were very adamant about the fact that they wouldn't partake in the price war that was caused by Tesla, who has been kind of dictating uh, for the rest of the market to cut prices as well. Well, after some disappointing sales figures came out, and I'm sure um, investors uh, voicing their opinion that they're not so happy about what was going on with Neo, why is it selling less than Lee Auto, why is it selling less than Xpong as well, uh, Neo felt pressure to actually end up cutting their prices by 30,000 yuan, which is around 4,200 US dollars if I recall correctly. But one of the big problems here is the market segment that Neo's in, which is why I've been harp harping on the Alps brand so much about it being released next year, and this could be a game changer and inflection point, is that the high-end market isn't very profitable for electric vehicles right now. The core needs of high-end buyers have not been fully met at this point. The current limit limitations as far as battery technology, battery life, and charging infrastructure are preventing high-end electric vehicles from replacing their gasoline counterparts. To address these challenges, Neo is taking a multifaceted approach. They released the ET5 Touring, which is a station wagon, and if you know or if you watched the video I put out not too long ago, the station market wagon in China is almost non-existent. Chinese consumers um, station wagons make up a, a little bit over 8% of the Chinese market. So it's clear to see from the market that Chinese um, consumers are not really choosing station wagons right now. Now, is that because it has never been done correctly or is that because there's just lack of interest? That's why I called this a 50-50 bet. If Neo succeeds, then they'll be able to capture and um, also knock down the door for a new market, making them the leader in it. But if they fail, they'll have wasted a lot of energy and investment into the station wagon market. Now, for Europe, on the other hand, they tend to love station mar station wagons over there. So I think that this car will be pretty successful in Europe. But Neo isn't really selling nearly as many cars in Europe uh, as it is in China right now for them to justify taking on this expense if it doesn't work out. Secondly, Neo is diversifying their product into the lower end market as well because they realize the problems that I just outlined earlier. There's a lot of problems when it comes to the high end EV market and for Neo to reach scale, I really do believe that they're going to need um, a brand that is going to be able to appeal to a wider audience. And that's where the Alps and the Firefly brand come in. The Alps brand is going to be Neo's mass um, market vehicle brand from the 200,000 to 300,000 yuan um, price point, and that's going to 
uh, come out in, Ch in China and they don't need to change their infrastructure around. It'll be able to operate on the you know, same infrastructure with batteries of service or battery swapping or anything that you can get out of neo today from a battery technology perspective the firefly brand will be even cheaper it's supposed to roll out in europe that's going to be from the 100,000 to 200,000 yuan price point and so i think that both of these brands that are expected to release next year could help neo reach scale and sell a lot more cars faster and help their the problem that they're currently facing as far as sale this strategy will help neo uh compete against cheaper uh, electric vehicle makers such as BYD or um, GAC as well, who are making these cheap cars that are selling pretty fast. But guess what? Neo has a better technology, in my opinion. Entering the low end market can also be a challenge, though. Oftentimes it's a race to the bottom, but we'll have to see how things play out. I think with um, the price point that they're at with the um, subs with the tax exemptions that they'll receive in China as well, which is favored towards battery swapping. And then also having battery as a service, I think Neo can come in at really competitive prices uh, with the Alps brand. And obviously the Firefly brand is going to be priced even cheaper in Europe. Now, at one point on this channel, there was a time when we were talking about Neo having plans of European expansion. And guess what? They actually are in Europe at this point in time. They first entered Norway. The company plans to gradually expand its footprint in the European market. And if they're able to do that, that'll help out the company big time. This move will allow Neo to tap into growing demand for um, electric vehicles in Europe and then also diversify its client base, which is obviously going to help out sales. Uh, in the long run if successful. Additionally, NEO is very adamant about expanding its infrastructure wherever they go. They know that they need to get more infrastructure on the ground in Europe and they've been consistently expanding their uh, infrastructure in China as well, which is going to give consumers of all three of these brands in the future, NEO, Alps, Firefly, um, a real reason to purchase neo and it's going to kind of widen the moat through infrastructure as well they have neo power swap which allows users to quickly switch out their batteries for a full battery in under five minutes they also have superchargers just like tesla and they're putting more of those on the on the ground they also have charging piles destination chargers so with neo it's really kind of pick your own flavor how do you want to charge your electric vehicle and i think that once they have a lot of infrastructure on the ground, the decision will be easy for consumers. That's the reason a lot of people in the U.S. choose a Tesla over um, any other electric vehicle because Tesla just has the infrastructure on the ground and, and NEO's made this a focus point for them as well. And I think that's the logic behind it. All of NEO's new vehicles are coming out on their second generation platform, which is NT 2.0. And on this platform, NEO aims to kind of deliver cutting edge technology and differentiate itself from the market and even differentiate themselves from um, their NT 1.0 uh, platform. So I make this video to make the point that yes, NEO has received funding from um, an entity in Abu Dhabi, but Neo's likely going to have to raise more capital, especially with their short term liabilities debt that they have to pay over the next 12 months. And so to raise more capital, they have to really show investors something. And when I say show investors something, I mean, that means that Neo as a company needs to really increase their sales. And so all these things that they're doing are efforts to increase their sales and really strike an inflection point here. By focusing on these areas, NEO aims to increase its sales, overcome its current challenges, and really position itself as a leader in the electric vehicle market uh, globally and especially in China to start. I want to know what you guys think about NEO and their plans to increase their sales. Do you think that they're moving in the right direction or do you think that um, they're, they're not really doing the right thing at this time? Leave a comment down below, hit the like button. Uh, remember to subscribe if you're new here and click that notification bell icon. Thank you. I'll catch you guys in the next video and happy Monday.